This is Ross. He's a single dad from Kent who suffers from a condition known as cyberphobia, a fear of food. Terrified to taste anything new, he's eaten the same three types of food every day for nearly 30 years. For Ross, just smelling, let alone tasting anything else, can bring about a severe physical reaction. Well, it don't look like it, but I can't eat hardly anything. The only food that I eat is chicken, bacon and chips. Anything else, I'll just run away from it. You know, it's just a no-no. I won't go nowhere near it. Ross's mum, Julia, is cooking fish, but his fear of trying new foods is so strong that he can't bear to be anywhere near the kitchen, and eating it would be impossible. I can smell it already. I'm not even joking. I can smell it, and it, it smells disgusting. My brain won't allow me, my body won't allow me, my mind won't allow me to, to, to do it. God, I've, got, I've got to go out already, I can't, I can't, I can't stand the smell, sorry. Food phobia is ruling Ross's life. It's a condition that goes back to his childhood. Between the ages of four and six, I think my relationship with food changed dramatically. There was a situation where I was in play school uh, where where I was force fed and I was held by, I don't know, uh, the, the teacher, uh, you know, and I was, I, I, had, I think it was mash put in, put in my face. Ross's recollection of being force fed is vague and it's quite possible that his memory is of a well-intentioned person who was trying to encourage him to eat. His mum remembers when her son's problems began. Even though I told them that myself, that Ross wouldn't eat mashed potatoes, they made him eat mashed potato. My mum said that I, I used to eat everything and then all of a sudden I just didn't. I feel quite guilty about this now because I didn't see it as that they were force feeding him. I just saw it that they were making sure that he ate something. But I didn't know to the extent that they were doing that, obviously. And um, this then psychologically for Ross became a big problem. There was a couple of things that I liked to eat and everything else was just, no, I forced, forced it out, kicked away, pushed and kicked and punched and, yeah, I rejected everything. Maybe that was why he, he is like he is today. And I do feel guilty because there isn't anything I can do about it. That one? For almost 30 years, Ross has struggled to change his eating habits. But as a single dad to six-year-old Leo, Ross knows he has to overcome his food phobia. I'm worried that he's going to follow my footsteps if I don't change the way that I eat. <laughs> I love Leo with all my heart and soul. I'm beginning to see these changes in Leo that I saw in Ross when Ross was six. The same sort of fatty eating's coming on and I'm scared that Leo's going to end up with this phobia too. It really worries me. It almost worries me more so than me trying something that I don't like. And I don't think I can face that. I don't think I can... I love him so much, I don't want to be responsible for that. That will break me. For Ross, the stakes couldn't be higher. And his younger sister, Sean, knows all too well the effect it's having on the wider family. Ross has missed out on various birthday meals of mine, like my fifth birthday, at a restaurant we went to, and he couldn't be there because he didn't like the smells. I would cook normal dinners for him, and he would try and eat it and he couldn't eat it. He's, it was, he'd spit it out or he'd just feel sick or he'd get a headache and, and say, Mum, I can't eat this food. It just, I can't stand the smell of it. I can't put it in my mouth. Having such a strong physical reaction to food isn't just keeping Ross from his friends and family. It's ruining his health. He gets more aches and pains than he used to. He thinks that he's going to die young, and I know, I don't know if he's going to tell you that, but he actually does think that he isn't going to live a long life because of the vitamins that he's lacking, the iron, everything, you know, he doesn't eat vegetables at all. I'm aware of my obesity, I hate it. I could easily get diabetes because of my size, heart disease, and it scares the life out of me. This is a massive problem for us. By the time he's my age, I think he's going to be suffering a lot more with his health and he can't just keep eating what he's eating and, and live to be an old age. I really believe that. <laughs> it's heartbreaking to see my mum get upset. Unless this works, 
I don't know what we're going to do. Ross knows that time is running out and he's desperate to get his health back. I've suffered with this all my life and I can't see that light at the end of the tunnel, but I have got just that 1% bit of hope there that it can be done. And I'm going to try my utmost to open my mind up and try and be, be cured. If Ross meets this treatment <laughs> and they can cure him, it would be like winning the lottery for me. It would be like Christmas for me. Hip, just to sit down and have a meal, a Christmas dinner with my family, and Ross not say, Mum, I can't eat it. Oh, Mum, get away from me. <laughs> and that smell of that. It's just happy days. Happy days for all of us. It'd be amazing, absolutely amazing. Overwhelmed by a fear of food, Ross has found it impossible to share a meal with his family. Hoping to change his eating habits, he and his mum, Julia, have arrived at Speakman Hall. I'm feeling very nervous at the moment, but, you know, I've got hopes. I'm hoping after today that Ross will be a changed person, that his attitude will be different towards food, that he'll just feel better in himself. And for all of us, that's just going to be such a great thing. Uh, let's just do it. I'm ready. Today's case is uh, Ross has got a food phobia, and it's something that is really common, and it usually stems back to childhood. There's no guarantees in therapy, but we're certainly going to give it our best shot, and we're going to just hope that Ross really interacts with us and is very open, because that's what's needed to make today be a massive turning point in his life. Unable to change his eating habits on his own, can Nick and Eva help Ross overcome this desperate situation? Thank you so much for coming to see us today. Uh, Nick and I would like to know everything about you and what's actually brought you through our door today. Well, uh, I've obviously got like a problem uh, with, with my food and my eating. Exactly what is it? All I eat is chicken and bacon. Uh, it's, it's, like a, it's like a firewall that comes up in my brain. Uh, I believe it's something that happened to me when I was younger. It's caused the psychological block that's stopped me from even attempting to try other food. So it's and just chicken and bacon? Chicken and bacon. I, I have like a few savouries, crisps. Mm -hmm. And how long have you had this, Ross? Probably from about the age of four. What happened that could have created this? When I was at play school, mm -hmm. when, when I was around about four years old, uh, I was false fed. Do you actually remember that? Uh, I've got very, very, uh, very clouded memories of it, you know, but I can kind of remember being lifted up and held and having the food put in my mouth and me kicking and punching and screaming. I remember Ross telling me when he was little that he didn't like the food that he was eating at play school. Um, I don't know if I believe that he was being false fed. I just believe that they were making sure that he ate something rather than not and um, it's a bit sort of distressing listening to Ross describing it like that because I didn't have a clue that that's how he felt. Okay, and did you remember seeing a change in Ross? From the age of about four onwards his eating habits changed whereas he didn't want to be in the room certain smells certain times dinner time um, and he'd avoid dinner time. How did that feel when, when you looked at it? It was very, very difficult. It really was. Um, I took Ross to doctors. How bad did it get? Well, just to where he'd only eat a single piece of food, i.e. chicken or bacon. Was that scary for you? Yes, yeah, there was a lot of other things going on. You know, my Ross's dad passed away when he was six. So there was the cancer treatment going on, Ross being placed with friends and family, being you know, eating different foods, probably didn't, he probably didn't even eat, but, you know, and the, the play school and the childminders, and they were all making him eat foods that he didn't want to eat. Can I ask you, Ross, what do you recall about your dad and about him being ill? He was ill for a long time. Uh, you know, I was missing him because he was going away for long, long periods of time. Uh, I can remember him losing his hair from treatment. Uh, so it was, it, was, it was obviously very, very distressing. What's your favourite memory? Uh, him taking me for walks with my, with my dog. Me and him together, walking through the alleyway leading into the woods. 
you know, feeling of freedom, tranquil. Julia, what do you recall about their relationship? They had a very, very close relationship. They, um, even though his dad was diagnosed with cancer not long after Ross was born, um, for six years he had it, and um, they were very close. It was like he Mick put a lot of effort into the relationship with Ross because he knew he was going to die. So What was that like for you as a mum, knowing oh. that one minute you've got this great news of having a baby together and that you were ultimately going to become a single parent? Um, after Mick died, I didn't grieve a lot. I grieved when he was alive because I knew he was going to die. And we talked a lot about what we'd do and what I'd do after he died. That was the most heartbreaking thing of all of it, discussing what I was going to do with Ross after his dad died. And, um, Have you ever discussed that with Ross? Yeah. Yeah, Ross knows. Um, and how does that make you feel, Ross? Uh, I don't know, it's kind of something that I've had to live with from, from being a child, not having a father. Often little things pop up in my mind. <laughs> you know, as I've got older, you know, there's, there's little, little little bits and bobs that I've asked and, and my, my mum's always been there to support me and answer my questions. I feel that Ross felt that he had to be the man of the house after Mick died. And um, the food thing then, as he got older, just Ross was out a lot then. There wasn't set meal times. And if there would have been set meal times, I don't know what I would have given him because it was just, I don't want it. I don't want it, Mum. Yeah. I've got to ask you the question, why chicken and bacon? I mean, obviously, there's so many things that you could have chosen. Why them two? I wish I knew. I wish I knew. You know, if I, if I knew these, if I knew these, if I knew that question, I'd probably be able to solve the answers myself. OK. It's something he chose. It wasn't something that I gave him a lot of. He chose them two things himself. I don't know where or how, but so that's... It's so it's kind of a... And potatoes yeah. or just crisps? Uh, yeah, pot potatoes, chips. But not mashed potato. You've got a little boy. Uh, you know, how does that affect him and you together? It affects... It affects my son. It affects us both. Uh, it affects the way that I am, the way that I look. What about, is your son not copying, I mean, children copy behaviour? Yes, that's of what course, happens. of so course. So what's happening in that department? Of course, yes, he is starting to, he is starting yeah. to copy my behaviour. Yes, I am his role model. Yes, I can see that. And yes, he's breaking my heart and I know that I'm responsible for that. And uh, that's, that's, that's why I'm here, I want to make the change. Then there's your mum, who I can see is very upset. Julie, will you tell him how, how this makes you feel? I've longed for us all to just be around a table and sit together and eat a meal together. And I know that he can't. And it's not because he doesn't want to. I know you want to, but I know what happens and how you react to things. And I need Leo not to be and have dysphobia. I understand. It just scares me. Yeah. And you, and I know it scares, it scares me too. you too. Yeah, of course it does. And how does that make you feel to know the impact that you're having on Leo. It beats me up inside. It makes me feel ugly. It, make, it makes me feel like a monster. If you didn't get this resolved, what does the future look like for you both? I ain't got much of a future, to be honest, if, if I don't change the way, the way that I am. I'm suffering, you know, I'll get palpitations and that now. I could be a, a whole lot better. And I'm aware of everything. That's just the thing. How old was your dad when he died? 67. He's 35. Oh, yeah. Your dad. Thirty-five. And how old are you? I'm thirty-three, and I'm very superstitious. But like, I was six when my father passed away. Now my son's six. But how still... does this make you feel, Julia, hearing this? I don't want to lose my son, and I don't want Leo to lose his dad. And but I do feel that if Ross doesn't start to be able to eat normal, like everyone else, and just a normal life, that he will die young, and I don't want to lose my son. And I don't want to watch Leo growing up without his dad. <laughs> and um, I see someone that's very sad inside. Uh, somebody that needs someone to help him. <laughs> Yourselves, that's why I emailed you. Because I just know that you probably can help him just get over this. Ross, we've got a little message for you from Leo that I'd like to share. OK. 
So how do you feel about what daddy eats? That what he doesn't like? Um, how do you feel about it? Good. How does it make you feel? Bad. Why? He don't eat what I eat and then he can't can't go to places that sells stuff that I like but he don't. Daddy, can you start eating stuff I like after sprinkles once they've made you eat stuff that I like so then we can go out for dinner. Thank you. Oh. How does that make you feel, Russ? Just loving dinner. <laughs> my boy. I want to change. I love my boy. He's my world. So, in the, the video that we just watched, we saw your sister and, and your daughter, Shan. Um, we'd like to invite Shan in, really, and hear yeah, her version of events. That'd be great. Okay. We can't be a family and how normal families are. I want him to enjoy time with me and my mum and Leo, all as a family, all going out to eat. And I think the day that happens will be the day that we become a proper family again. Been hearing off Ross and your mum how Ross's situation affects them. So now we'd like to hear how it affects you. I suppose it's something you have to sit and watch. To understand, like it's, it's it's distressing to watch. Do you love your brother? A lot. So, and so does it really upset you? Yeah, a lot. In what way? How does it make you feel? <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> it's hard. I'd like you to tell Ross what it feels like. <laughs> I'd love to spend time with you, like on our own going out and doing what brother and sister do, like spending time together. And we can't, because everything nowadays just involves food, like going to the cinema. There's food everywhere. It's, it's difficult. And I'd love it to change. How do you feel, Ross, knowing that Sean's so upset? Breaks my heart. Breaks me to pieces. Today's about being open and, and we've all got to be open and honest. And I know that you've all written letters to each other, so could I ask you, Sean, to start and read your letter to Ross, please? Dear Ross, I hate seeing you sad and not be able to eat what you want. And the Speakmans will try and help you. You'll hopefully be helped with your phobia problem soon. We are so proud of you for taking this step and I cannot wait until the problem disappears. Don't be scared, cos this will be all over soon. Dear Ross, I'm writing you this to let you know that I'm really proud of you for being here and I'll always love you. And I'm so sorry if any of this was my fault and I hope that you can forgive me and I love you with all my heart. Love, Mum. I forgive you. Ain't your fault. Julie, why do you feel that it's your fault? When Ross was younger, I wasn't around for him as much as I could have been because his dad was ill. So I was always at the hospital or, or looking after his dad. And other people were feeding him. You know, so you've carried this guilt all these I years? I do feel guilty. I do feel guilty. I put him in play school. I put him in all them places where people were giving him stuff that he couldn't eat, that he physically made him feel sick. And I didn't know about that. Thanks, Julia. Thank you. Ross, can we move on to your letter, please? To Mum, Sean, Leo. I'm writing this letter to tell you how I feel. All I want to do is be helped and get over this nasty phobia that's haunted me all my life and make you all proud. I love you all dearly. Ross. So, <laughs> Ross, tell me, are you ready to change that? I'm hoping that I'm ready. It's time to say our goodbyes. In the mediation session, 
Everybody got upset. All three of them cried. Ross was already starting to put things together in that he established that he was six when he lost his dad. And that's quite poignant because Leo, his son, is now six. And he realises that if it was possible for him to lose his dad at six, then it's very, very possible for Leo to lose his dad too. Seeing Leo on the screen absolutely broke my heart. <laughs> I can't even describe how much that, that, that choked me and made me really upset. I love him and I, I want to get this sorted out. It's very apparent that Julia has lost the love of her life. Ross has become the love of her life and she's terrified she's going to lose him too. My mum's very, very uh, passionate about wanting to see me get better and move forward. And, you know, I think my mum has coped well and I can see that she wants change. It's been quite heartbreaking. I think we've got a, a long and quite an in-depth therapy session ahead, but I'm just so pleased that they've come to us today. The facts are, you were not born like this. You were not born fearing any foods. Do you agree? I agree. What actually happened on one particular day, you're at nursery, they're trying to give you something that you either don't want to eat, or let's face it, you know, we're, we're all parents, we've all seen kids in action. It might have been that it wasn't anything to do with the fact that they were trying to force feed you. It might have been that they were saying, come on, Ross, it's time to sit and eat, and you wanted to go and play in the sandpit for all we know. And like any kid who wants to do something else, you kick off. Of course. But your mum's not there to support you. No. And you look around and you see them trying to feed you, and suddenly you look at the food and it's like, that is the enemy. Nip. And in that moment, at the age of four, you made a decision to blame the food for the fact that your dad was ill, you had to go to nursery, you probably wanted to go and play, and you didn't want your dinner right there and then. I actually don't even think it was anything that you didn't want to eat, quite honestly. Because at the age of four, you're not really, you kind of go with the flow. You go with what's put in front of you. And what you did was blame food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm coming to understand that now, yeah. And who should you blame? Uh. Even myself or the person who, who, who gave me the food at the time. OK. I think that, you know, as a four-year-old child, you can't take blame for anything. No, of course not. So, if you wanted to blame anybody, you should have blamed that person. And if you were sat here today and you said, right, I've got a phobia to this woman who force-fed me, I'd get it. But what I'm struggling to understand right now is as a 33-year-old adult, with his own child, who you're the role model of, and you're trying to show him how the world works, you're giving him a really bad example. Yeah. So the question that we've got here today is you want to still believe something that you believed as a four-year-old, or do you want to dismiss it as a load of rubbish? I want to dismiss it as a load of rubbish, but uh, you know, uh, physical and mental is Who's in so charge? Who's in charge of what goes on in your head? Me. Just you? Yeah. OK. What does force feeding really look like? Do you know what, can I ask you? Will you just close your eyes? So you can just focus on it more. Keep and just, just relive that situation. And tell us yeah, what you see. Of course, I'll just see myself being held up, punching and kicking away and someone else spoon-feeding me food while I'm punching and kicking and gagging and choking. And were they holding you down? I was being held like that, and like in a bear hug, and, yeah, and literally getting it rammed in my gob. Last time that happened today, and you saw that happening, what would you want to do? I just want to protect it, protect that child. OK, so how would you put it right? Well, I would stop the people from doing what they're doing, you know, cos it, it was wrong. OK. But... Have you, would you have any words for the food? No, of course Why not? not? Because... It, like, like uh, it ain't f the, the food's fault. OK. Are you sure it's not the food's fault? Yeah, of course. All we're asking you to do, Ross, is to look at it as a grown-up and stop looking at it as a four-year-old because that's been the conflict and that's been the problem. Yeah. 
well, I'd like to be able to lie that foundation down right. and, and cement it and concrete yeah. it, you know. Right, we'll but do it now, then. Do it. All do you it need now. to know, all, all right. you need to ask yourself, is it true? I'll carry on believing it if it's true. If it's not true, you know, sorry to be so blunt, but who would believe something that's not true? To have any hope of a cure, Ross needs to swap his childhood anxieties for a future with his family. Forget anything else that's going on in the room. I want you to just look at me. Eyes. OK, all right? But don't look at my eyes. I want you to look at my watch. Yeah. OK, cos it's a pretty cool watch. Yeah. OK? I want you to keep your head still and just move your eyes. OK? And I'm going to move the watch around in a circle. Keep your head still. That's great. Just like that. Well done. OK? So what I'm going to ask you now, when I go around in the circle, there'll be some point in that circle where you feel that fear of food. I want you to tell me where it is. It could be the strongest here, it could be here, it could be here. So look at my watch and tell me where you feel the strongest fear. Yeah. Right there. Right, let me ask you something else now. I want you to think about Leo. OK, I want to look at my watch. I'm going to go around the circle and tell me whereabouts in the circle do you feel the most love for your son? Where's the strongest point? Yeah. There, yeah. brilliant. Love OK. Point. Well done. Whereas if I ask you to look at my watch here, mm -hmm. think about food, you get a bad feeling, don't you? You're okay. going to love this, Ross. You're going to love this. So what I'm going to do, Ross, you're going to keep your head still mm -hmm. and you're going to look at my watch here. OK, and you keep your eyes on my watch. I'm going to move it up here, but I'm going to do it dead fast. And when you get here, I need you to blink continuously for me. Really fast. Go on, so just do that for me. Blink continuously. That's it. Perfect. Go on, faster. Faster, 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 faster. Brilliant. OK, got it. Right, so look here. Keep your eyes on the watch. Think about the fear that you've got for food. OK, feel it. Have you got the fear? Can you feel it? Yeah. OK, it's feel it. It's horrible. Yeah, you know. look at the watch. Keep your eyes on the watch, eyes on the watch. I'm going to move it now, eyes on the watch. Whoosh! Blink, 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 blink. Faster, 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 faster. Faster, 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 faster. Faster, 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 faster. Well done. And again. Feel the fear. Whoosh! Blink, faster, 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 faster. Blink, 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 blink. Faster, 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 faster. And again. Whoosh! Blink, faster, 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 faster. Close your eyes. Squeeze your eyes tight. Open your eyes. Close your eyes. Squeeze your eyes tight and give me a big sigh. Uh, no, that's a lot of sigh. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Come on. Uh, Come on, you're a big guy. Give me a big sigh, for God's sake. Uh, <laughs> there, <you go. laughs> there you go. And slowly open your eyes. OK. Time to put the treatment to the test as Ross faces the foods he spent his whole life avoiding. Well, it's different now, isn't it? A bit. It's not frightening, though, is it? Not at the moment, no. <laughs> not at the moment. Confusion, I get it. <laughs> OK. Can I hold it? Mm -hmm. Tell me what you're thinking. I'm not scared. You've had almost 30 years of being scared. Yeah. And now you're confused. I'm not putting it to... Like, I'm not trying it yet, am I, you know? Right, and I don't know if I okay. could try it. You, okay. you, do you know what I mean? It's... Well, I'll tell you what. Mm. Try some melon. What? Try some of that melon. I'll give you a nice bit of melon. It's just... See, I think... Oh, is that... Mm. Lick it. You're expecting it to smell awful. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I don't know. It's confusion. It's, it, yeah, I, I, I. Try it. You have to eat it hard just a little bit. Do you, do you notice then, Evie? It, it didn't attack him. I know. That is amazing. Yeah, that, that's all right. Have you ever tried pineapple? That's something that I've been trying to work myself up to try because I've heard this is a fat burner. Well, today's the day. So I heard that was a good 70s thing to burn fat. I 
I can tell you now it ain't gonna kill you. That's when nice. you were being forced, <laughs> though. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually nice. Hallelujah. But... Oh, here we go. <laughs> but it's... I don't know about I don't know about the other stuff. Well, you've not tried it yet. No. You didn't know about the pineapple thirty seconds ago. No, pineapple's all right, isn't it? Yeah. 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 You, yeah. You've finally grown up. You're being a dad and an adult. Mhm. Mm right. Let's go into some hardcore stuff. Here we go. Go on. She's the one. If your Leo could see you now, he'd be like, whoa. <coughs> I can't do it. <coughs> a tissue, it's tissue at the side, yeah? <coughs> tissue at the side, then. You don't like the taste of that? Oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's what it was. Rejecting it. You're not rejecting You're it. You're not rejecting it, you decided not to eat it. Sorry about it. All right. I'll try. Spark your chair. Get some on your chair. Lovely. Despite the Speakman's best efforts, Ross has been beaten by the broccoli. How right. can you decide you don't like something you've I'm never no, tried? No, no, because of the look and the smell and... Oh, that's absolute rubbish. Oh, I just don't want yeah. to be sick. OK. So, we've got our next test for you. A banana. Mm -hmm. Of all the foods rejected by Ross, he disliked bananas the most. The last time he ate one, he experienced an extreme reaction. I hate it, I start sweating. It took me three months to try a little tiny piece of banana. And when I put that in my mouth, I managed to chew it, chew it once or twice. I spat it out because my throat rejected the banana. As soon, as soon as it touched my, my tongue, my throat rejected it and I, I was sick. Okay, do you want to give it a go? Yeah. Are we getting any anxiety at all? Doing that? No. Who's that? Not my cup of tea, but. Well, you've not been saying. Give it another bite, give it another go. What would uh, your mum and your family think now, Leo, if they saw you sat here eating a banana? Thanks, work. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a bonus. <laughs> that's brilliant. Did you think this morning, Ross, that you'd be able to eat a banana? No. Or a pineapple? No. Or a melon? No. No way. Good. I mean, that's, that's fantastic that you've come so far. But do you know what? We've got another big challenge for you. Right now, your son yeah. and your mum yeah. and your sister are in a restaurant. Yeah. How would you fancy if we take you to that restaurant and you prepare some food for them? I'll give it a try, yeah. With a happy heart and are you excited to give it a go? Yeah, I'll give it a go, yeah. Well, come on then, what are we waiting for? Let's go and Pops, do it. Let's yeah. go. Come on. I think Ross's day has been very enlightening for him because we explained to him that he wasn't born this way, that he had an incident in his life and that he was merely protecting himself and he'd been seeing this whole thing through a child's eyes. The turning point really was being aware of what, what it was that caused the problem in the first place. All them many years ago when I was four years old and now I'm aware it really ain't a big obstacle, you know, but I've started climbing that obstacle and I'm, I'm almost over it. Whereas all of us have had a lifetime of trials of different foods and, and varieties of food, Ross is starting from day one today and he's slowly going to have to start experimenting with different things. We're delighted that he's tried banana and pineapple and melon and things that he's never ever tried ever ever in his life. When I ate the banana I felt a lot less anxious, they've taken away that anxiety, they've worked their magic most definitely. He's still got work to do. It would appear that he's got an aversion to all these things separately. So we've worked on some, he's got to work on the others himself, but ultimately, if he carries on on this path, he's going to be totally okay.
With the treatment session over, the Speakmans believe the next step to rebuilding Ross's relationship with food is to come to a local restaurant. Just a few days ago, the smells in this kitchen would have had him running for the exit. But Ross knows this is his last chance to prove he's serious about changing his eating habits. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling OK. You know, uh, I'm ready to go for it and see what happens, I suppose. His first challenge is to prepare afternoon tea, something he's never eaten before. Until today, the only meal Ross had made for Leo was a bowl of cereal. He couldn't even be in the same room as foods he didn't like, let alone touch them. You're not looking anxious in any way, because I was stood over there watching you, and I'm not seeing any anxiety. Uh, no, I don't feel anxious. I'm feel, yes. de feel determined to well give done. it a crack, well so. This is a major milestone for Ross, but one he knows will make him a better role model for his son. Ross's phobia isn't only spoiling his own life. It's been almost 30 years since he and his family have enjoyed a meal together. I don't know where Ross is at. Like... Do you think he's done everything or he's still doing it? I don't know. Or how he's feeling about it? I reckon he'd be nervous. Do you think if we see him, he's got a big smile on his face, then he's going to be, he's gonna be happy? Okay. I hope so, too. Clearly, they want Ross to change his eating habits and be part of their life. Your family are in the next room, and what we're going to do is you are going to go and take that in there and serve it to them. OK. How cool is that going to be? It's going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Well done, John. Well done. <laughs> Fabulous. This is the moment of truth. Will Ross be able to prove he's changed by joining his family at the dinner table? Have the Speakman succeeded where doctors and all other therapies have failed? Food is served. Oh, oh my God! God. <laughs> 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 Good Look at you. Oh. How do you feel? Am I? Really? Can I get you a cuddle? Can I get you a cuddle? Are you alright? <laughs> oh, come here, my little man. I love you. Can you believe? No, Can you I believe can't. that your son made that <laughs> in the kitchen? Oh my God! Well, he, made it. Really? he made that. <laughs> For the first time in almost three decades, Ross and his family are sitting round a table together. Can you eat? Can you eat one thing? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, at, at, at the moment, Leo, I'm doing one thing at a time. Okay. He knows he's got a long way to go but he's starting to get his life back. There's, there's things I can eat at, at the moment, and there's still things that I'm going to try to eat well, you know in the your future. Dad, we saw your dad eat him. We saw him eating a big yes, banana. And mm. pineapple. Seriously? Uh, yeah, honestly. Seriously. I like pineapple. I really like pineapple. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> pineapple? You ate a banana? Seriously? Yeah, I ate a banana. It was all right. It went, went, you know, I prefer pineapple, to be honest. Oh, my God. And but do you know what? That's the thing. Bit of He's not like everything, I can't it? even believe that you just said that. Yeah, banana, Leo. I'm banana man now. <laughs> Frightened by food since he was a small boy, Ross wanted to change his eating habits for the sake of his six-year-old son. Now it's time to prove to Leo that this is a phobia he can beat. All right, I'll try that. I'll try it, OK? Yeah. Yeah? Come right. on, Mum. Ready? Yeah. Oh, How's that? Do you recommend them? Should we try one or not? What? Are you to try a bit? Well done. <laughs> well done, Leah. A little bit sour for Daddy, but... That's what do you think? Oh, I can't believe you've seen it either. You're absolutely bit into that, then. No, it's With no fear, nothing, just bit straight it into it. I can't believe it. Thank you so much. Do you want to try one of these eclairs? Come on. Half each, eh? With Leo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to share with me? I'm not about that. It's lovely. Is it nice? <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd ever see it, ever. Just Ross and Leo sharing food, ever. Ever. 
Sure, I ain't gonna bath that, sir. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. So, so much. It's been, it's been a real pleasure. <laughs> Do you know what? That was absolutely amazing. Because going in, it was like, is it gonna work? Is it not? You know, high risk because his family are there. Um, but amazing. He prepared the stuff in the kitchen, he went out, saw his son, and he just tried stuff. And, and the thing is, as I said, he's not gonna like everything but he tried it with no fear. And that's the thing, so we know it's worked. It's amazing. It went excellent, uh, surprised everyone. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, my son was shocked. Uh, <laughs> and my mum and Sean was a little bit emotional. Just to share a piece of food with, with my grandson and just do it and not even think about it. I'm just so amazed, I'm so in awe of them. They're, they're such a beautiful people and I will never, ever, ever be able to thank them enough. I really don't know how they've done it or what they've done or what they've said, but something has changed completely. It was like a big weight had been lifted off his shoulders. The way he looked, his whole persona was totally different. This means millions to me. It means the difference between life and death. And now I can actually say I feel alive. Watching Leo being dead excited and proud of his dad and, and seeing Ross just trying things and having but a bit like of fun. it was like, Leo, try this, Dad, yeah, try this. Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, I love it some like, of that then, yeah. Wow, that's how a family should be. And they're all sat round a table together for the first time. And it was just wonderful. It was really emotional for, for all of us, I think. But it was just amazing. Next time on The Speakmans. I can no longer drive because I have a massive fear that we're going to crash or we're all going to die. <laughs> I just feel so stupid. A whole body changes, the colour drains from my face. I desperately need help to fix it. I can't fix it on my own. We want to get you over this, but we're going to struggle doing that if you keep those shutters down. <laughs> <laughs>